Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 1 the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying arise and go down to the potter's house this is the famous potter's house passage in the scripture and what God is doing is he's providing us Jeremiah the people of Judah an illustration an illustration is like a sower went to out and sowed some seed parables actual stories and what God is doing is through, through the prophets he has in the Old Testament I mean sometimes he calls them to do some weird things and these signs are for Jews for Jews require a sign there will I cause thee to hear my words you would think, wait a minute hear God's words at a potter And I would be, I would have remarked to you where I came from, from New London, Connecticut. We had a place called the Mystic Seaport. And that's his, I advise you to visit places like that. And one of the places in the Mystic Seaport is the printer shop. They got old fashioned presses. You can see a guy old fashionedly putting those little, uh, uh, they call it, little keys, little letters into the, to the box to make and print the old-fashioned way, no computers. And you know they had the old blacksmith shops and all. And I, I call you to go wherever you can find one in your area to visit these places and see how it's done. If you got somebody who, who makes pottery, or you know a place where they make the old-fashioned ways of making pottery, go there. And for the first thing, say, "Listen, you know what?" This is the kind of place that God called Jeremiah. And let me just sit there and watch. Maybe ask some questions. But be, be willing more to watch. And then maybe God will speak to you. What you witness. And what the Bible says. I've been, never been to a potter shop. Like I said, I've been to the old fashioned printing. That taught me some things from the Bible. That gave me a love and respect for the Bible. You know what? The old-fashioned Bibles, it took forever for one section of the Bible to be actually fully printed and to be lay out and then cleaning all the tiles, taking everything down, breaking everything down, and getting ready for the next page. So, hear my words at a potter's shop. Then I went down to the potter's house, and it would be his house. Back then, it was, the potter's house would be the potter's house. The blacksmith shop would be his house. And the grocer, he probably lived upstairs and were in the back room. Boy, have things changed. And behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. He did a job. He worked. Worked. And the wheels plural, there, there's several wheels involved with the potter. Not just the wheel that churns the clay, but the pulley, uh, the gears and all that. And the vessel that he made of clay was barred in the hand of the potter. Now he's got that lump of clay there, and he's working it with his hands. And the work of pottery, of the clay, it could have had a stone in it. It could have had a stick. It could have had a dry piece of clay. It could have got too hot. It could have got too cold. It may be at fault of the clay. It may be fault of the wheels. It may be at fault even the even of the, the potter with his hands. It may be truly the fault of the clay. But what it is is whatever that potter wanted that piece to be while he's working it it became marred it had a defect that's mankind God wants us for something and then we go blow it with sin and sometimes our sins that God has to restart our lives <laughs> well I can't use you for that anymore that step that you've done, that way that you went, 
Boy, did you blow it. Pilgrim's Progress is an example of the paths and the things that we do that mar. The fact is when David committed the sin with Bathsheba and the murder of Uriah, that changed the whole thing of David's life. And for four of his five of his four of his sons. And you think, well, God, okay, we get barred, I sin, we're all done with God. So he made it again another vessel. We ain't done. We ain't done until the day we are buried dead. God says, all right, fine. You are not what I intent originally intended for you to be. But I'll make it to be something else. It's when we become so marred, so rebellious, so hardened before he can work us, that we are of no value anymore. It seemed good to the potter to make it. In other words, God ain't done with us. God ain't finished. As long as we don't get too hardened in our way, we don't get... Too much in sin of rocks and sticks that, you know what, okay. Because if it got marred by a stone, what he would do is he'd pick up that piece of clay and he'd go through it again. He'd, you know, scrub through it, make sure, make sure there's no other stone, make sure there's no other rocks or sticks. And then it might be, you know what? Whatever you had to do, maybe, be, you know what, I can't make that again. I lost sight of what you're going to do. I'll make something else. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, here's, here's the word, hear my word. O house of Israel, can I, I do with you as this part? Yes, he can. Say the Lord. Behold, the clay is in the potter's hand. So are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. Now I know this is written to the house of Israel. There it is, plain and simple. But you can spiritualize it for the Christian. Now it wouldn't be doctrinally for the Christian. But you can, you can open up this passage and say, yes, the house of Israel. But what about the Christian? Aren't we not pottery? Are we not clay? Is not God our maker? And the relative fact is, darkly and, and historically, this is written to the children of Israel, ch children of Judah. And my message today, I like to just, let's look at it in the way of the Christian. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation, concerning a kingdom, to pluck it up, to pull it down, and destroy it. You know, God's long suffering. That's not what He wants to do. But it's the wages of sin that's death that it, that causes death, not God. God is long suffering. God's not willing that any should perish. God wants to bless. Sin destroys. If that nation against whom I pronounce. Turn from their evil. Turn. You see, repent. I will repent of the evil I thought to do. If Judah and Israel will only get right and turn. And listen, you can't say, oh, I'm sorry for the queen of heaven, and then go back and bake her cookies. You can't say, oh, Lord God, I'm sorry how I treat my brethren, and go back and continue to deceive them. Oh God, I'm sorry, I'm, a, I'm an unrighteous judge, and when you stand on the bench, you don't give the rights to the, home, to the uh, homeless and to the widows and the fatherless. A turning of repentance is you turn from your evil. And if you do the evil, because we all got that sin, that evil, that sin that you do, it bothers you. 
And the moment that, you know, we, the Bible does say that sin has that pleasure. And that moment that we evolved ourselves in the pleasure of our sins for that moment, and then the moment when we're finished, it brings guilt and it brings shame. And maybe tears and woe and misery that I sinned against God. You know, people criticize the Christian. Oh, you believe once saved, always saved, and you can go out and murder somebody and still be saved. I've never thought about murdering anybody since I've been saved. That hasn't been in my thoughts. It's in your thoughts, I'm saved. And God says, I will repent. It says, turn from your evil. That's repenting. God says, I will repent from the evil. From the evil I thought I would do. What is repenting? God says, all right, if you get right and you deal with the evil that you've done, then I'll get rid of the evil I will do to you. God says, if you get right and you repent, I will repent and I'll turn away what I'm going to do to you. I'll tell the Babylonian army to go home. I'll comfort them that comfort you. I, I, I will treat you how you treat others. And if you repent of your evil and you turn from your evil, I will do the same thing God says. And at what instant shall I speak concerning a nation, again, and concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it, that's much different from verse 7. Verse 7 is destroy. Verse 9 is to build, keep up, satisfy. And it's all the reaction, not of the evil, wicked God. It's all based upon the sinner and his conduct to his sin. You know, I know somebody who sinned against God. And I didn't know about it. No one knew about it. Well, the people involved knew. You know, I look at his pictures. And I see his pictures. You know, he was just getting an evil face. Until he repented and got right, and I got pictures, and it's like, wow, you know, what a change. And you can't think as a Christian, okay, I'm saved, I can do whatever I want to do. No, you cannot. Your evil is going to bring consequences. Be not deceived, God's not mocked, whatsoever man sows, that he shall also. Now, you may not reap the full, God may have mercy and grace. Or he may not give you mercy and grace. But be realized whether God gives you mercy and grace when it comes to the fields of sin and the crops that come in, others will be affected. And as far as the church age today, bringing the, the Jeremiah to the church age, oh, the church may think, oh, we're doing wonderful, we're rich, we're great, God must be pleased, and we're involved with the world, we're involved with carnality, we're, we're just, you know, this vain worshiping God thinking we're doing well. Then there's a day of reckoning. And let's say for the church or for the Christian, that day of reckoning, let's say it does not happen on this earth. Because not everything comes to a person on this earth. You may have a vile, wicked sinner, unsaved, and sin, and sin, and sin, and sin, and sin to the day he drops dead. He didn't win. Because then comes the judgment. And for the, for the Christian, if that's his attitude, or the church, or the pastor, or the Sunday, we're going to sin, 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 well, nothing's happened to me. The judgment seat of Christ. And your repenting at the judgment seat of Christ is not going to get you a crown. It's not going to get you a reward. It's not going to get you an inheritance. It's too late. And pastor of a church and your fellow Christians that go to church with you, they followed you. Yeah, they're Christians that follow other Christians in church. And they're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And they, Well, that's what the pastor did. That's what the Sunday school teacher did. That's what my fellow brother in that church did. Okay. You get the same thing. Wood, hay, or stubble, no crowns, no rewards, no inheritance. Did you not have a Bible? And the terror of some of the things of the churches and the Christians 
as far as instead of going to the world preaching the gospel, they got some other way that there will be people that will be standing at the great way, great white throne judgment. Well, he told me to say a prayer, God. You want to step up? Explain to this man what errors of the ways was. Now I got to cast him into hell. And God wants us to repent of that evil, make things right, and do things right. He doesn't want us to continue our sins. As far as the church age, the Revelation chapter 3 is Jesus Christ has stepped out of the church and he's knocking on the door of the church. In the days of Noah, God said to Noah and his family, the eight members of that family, come in with me to the ark. And God shut the door with them inside with God. The church age, God is outside And he's saying, come on out. <laughs> Man, if that's the church age, you can't apply as the days of Noah, so is the days of the church age, you're misapplicating the scriptures. That days of Noah and the days of Lot, that's coming to the end of the tribulation period, not the church age. If it do evil in my sight, God, that it obey not my voice. This is the name. God is looking at Israel as a corporate. Then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I will benefit them. You see that? There's a repentance of good. There's God say, okay, I'm not doing no good. Because they're not doing no good. And the people that say, well, God hates the sin and loves the sinner. It's your conduct of what you do with your sin. Now listen, if you sin a sin and everybody has got that one sin or two sins in our life. And we're, we sin that sin. And if our attitude is we don't want to do it. And, okay, yeah, purposely we do that sin, or we sin by accident, or we struggle with that sin. It's no longer I, but that sin dwells in me, but what is your act? Oh, I'm just going to do it, but nobody cares. Oh, that's a poor attitude. Oh, I'm a Christian. I can go ahead and do it. That's a poor attitude. And whether you commit that sin or you want that sin or you're strong with that sin and you go before God and say, God, I don't want to do it. Or, God, I do want to do it. Or God, I did it and I'm sorry i done it. That reaction is going to be what we want with our sin and how we dwelt with our sin is how God deals with us. And the churches are going to have some very serious problems with that aspect is they want to do what they want to do and it's sin but the devil is deceiving them thinking they're doing right and I know a case where I have been used in some churches go in that church and tell them they're wrong and have those churches get mad at me and they okay fine now therefore go to speak to the men of Judah talking to Jeremiah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you, and devise a device against you. Judgment's coming. Sowing is coming. Return ye now. Return. Come back, will ya? Will you get right? everyone from his evil way and make your way and your doings good and the aspect is Judah has set a course from the time that they came out of Egypt and God had explained to them all the ways and he wrote them down 
And he gave them Moses. He gave them Aaron. He gave them prophets. He gave them the way, guidance. As he does with the Christian. He gives the Bible, he gives Christians the Bible. He sent good pastors. He sent evangelists. He sent missionaries. And you are to study to show thyself approved to God. You are to challenge your pastor or pastors of churches and preachers and teachers and Sunday school teachers and evangelists by what the Word of God says. And if they violate the scriptures, you're to adhere away from them. But there are too many people sitting in churches. I have been in many churches where the pastor has misquoted the scriptures. He has in the Greek the scriptures. He has come up with heresy of the scriptures. He has been worldly and toxic to the Christian. I, I had one pastor one time, you know, uh, old smutty face talking about, I'm like, whoa. I don't like personally to challenge in any way the devil, and I know the Bible says, I, I, I don't want to deal with the devil because the devil will kick your butt and enjoy it. And I, I just, I've seen carnal preachers. I've seen carnal teachers, and uh, they disrupt the teaching. They, they they pervert it, and they deceive. And no one in the church raises a ruckus. And I've left many churches because of the ruckus. I sat with one preacher, almost wanting to kick me out, almost like pleading to me, will you please leave? Okay. I left that church because of the doctrine of the blood of Jesus Christ. I left another church on, on the principle of uh, John chapter 14. He quoted that verse and he didn't say mansion. I don't know what he said. Okay, goodbye. You're King James, but you corrected the King James. And you definitely corrected the King James in front of my face, or in my ears, from your pulpit. And no one else in that church got upset. Not one person. I, that very same church, they had a VBS, and, and they came up. Well, we were giving the kids NIVs. I went up to the person, and of course it would be me. NIVs were King James Bible. Well, that's the only thing we could get. I said, why don't we take those NIVs and have a big bonfire? Well, that didn't make it too happy, did it? It's doing wrong and going against doing wrong to do right. And he said, there, and they said, there is no hope. But Jesus Christ is the hope. But we will walk after our own devices. We don't care what God says. We don't care what God's going to do. We're going to do it our way. And we will, everyone, do the imagination of his evil. Now, look at what they're saying. Look at the words. That's from God. God told Jeremiah, this is what they're going to say. And I don't think God's a liar because God cannot, will not, is unable to tell a lie. The Israel, Judah is going to say, but we don't have any hope. Where God's their hope. And we're going to do what we devise to do. And we're going to follow our heart and let the leading of our heart. And then we read in Jeremiah 17, the heart is wicked above all things. Who can know it? Jesus said, <clears throat> out of the heart is murder, adultery, fornication, sin, 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 sin. Paul says, out of the flesh comes the same thing. That we're, in the expression today, again, is we're going to let our heart lead us. And your heart will lead you against God. Your heart will be an enemy against God. If you don't have that new birth, and even with the new birth, your saved soul, your heart, 
can be deceived by the wrong Bible or no Bible, and can be deceived by a church, can be deceived by a teacher, can be deceived by a pastor, can be deceived by a YouTube ministry or a Facebook ministry or whatever ministry. You can be deceived by the devil because 2 Corinthians 11 says that there are men that are of Satan who pretend to be righteous workers. And I guarantee you, their hearts are not the heart of the good. Any church, any church that's involved with sodomites and approving of sodomites and marrying sodomites and hanging rainbow bearers of sodomites and allowing sodomites to come and associating themselves with sodomites and having sodomites as the members of their churches you are an enemy of the Bible. You are an enemy of God. Because God says that sodomy is an abomination. You've got an evil heart, an evil practice, an evil church, an evil ministry. And I said it. I don't care how I said it. It's the truth. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Ask ye now among the heathen, the Gentiles, you know, those dogs, that Jonah said, I'm going the other way. Peter says, oh no, you didn't call me to go to the Gentile house. You know the book of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, where Jesus told him, don't go the way of the Gentile. Don't even go the way of the Samaritans. Now the Samaritans may be if be, but definitely don't go the way of the heathen. And then that they relate those books to the church. <laughs> Who have heard such things? Have those Gentiles heard such things? I mean, they're the ones who are killing their babies and children. They're the ones who are having sexual relationship with the horses. David, how the horses and kill them. And all their chariots were, do were dedicated to the gods. Burn their chariots. That's why God told them to hawk the horses and burn the chariots. I mean, you know, in the Orient, I've been told that there are families that will take their daughters and say, how much will you give her to me? And they'll outright sell their daughters. That's Gentile. The Virgin of Israel has done a very, very horrible thing. She's no longer a virgin. She's committed adultery with the devil. And the heathen. We'll see more of that in Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Will a man leave the snow of Lebanon, which cometh from the rock of the field? And shall the cold flowing waters that come from another place be forsaken? Hey, it's a hot day, it's a desert. You're going to leave that nice, cold, fresh, cold water. You know, I don't know how cold it was, but David, he's in battle one time. Said, oh, if I could just have some of that water, that one well in Bethlehem where I grew up. I don't know what it was about that water. I don't know what the memories of that water. This is about David saying, oh, if I could just have a little cup of water from that, from that well. And again, we're looking at this waters here. What is God pointing to? Jesus is at a well talking to a to a half-breed Jew who's of Jacob, he says, I'm the living waters. I don't know if that well was cold or not. Well, I tell you, Jesus would be fresh. He told that woman, if you drink a meal, you'll never thirst again, spiritually. Because my people, that'd be the Jews, that's not the Gentiles, that's not the church, because there is no church. My people have forsaken me. And you can Spiritually apply that to the church. God's Christians today have forsaken Him. In their mirth, in their music, their worship, in their service, in their activity. Again, I was in a carnal church. And my wife and I were amazed. And how many people went to roller skating night? 
How many people showed up to the bowling night? And there'd be tons of people that the church would sponsor. And then how many people would not be in Sunday morning school? And would not be in Sunday service? And we had the church would we would have a fellowship after the morning service, no even service. Okay, we go to Sunday school, we go to Sunday morning service, okay. And then when it came time for the fellowship, man, there were a lot more people there than there was in the Sunday service. My people have forgotten me. The church is forgetting Jesus. When you stand up and do what the Bible says, that's not what Jesus would do. And I'd say, that you are not a Bible studier. Who do you think you are? I know what I'm doing. Some people come up to me, you know, I got the beard and all that. I'm preaching on the street. You don't know what you're doing. And that's what they're saying so much. They'll come up to me. Judge not, you should be judged. You're judging me. I got one guy, he's really angry at me. And some of them, they argue and say, listen. And they'll come up to, if they don't say it, they'll come to blame. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're doing. I say, do you realize who you're talking to? No. I said, I'm doctor. I'm a doctor of theology. I've got my diploma at home. I have got. Let's see, I began, I began studying the Word of God truly and honorably about the year 2000. I've got 21 years of studying the Bible. A little bit more even before that. A minimum of 21 years of studying the Bible, I thought. I read it every single year at least once. And not the fact is I've double read the Bible and triple read the Bible. One time for reading it through, one time for studying, and one time... I do believe God showed me what to do. They have burned incense to vanity. Emptiness. Nothing. Catholic Church, they burn that incense. When they come make their parade down the aisle. <laughs> Man, that's the worst smell I ever smelled in my life. Now, I have incense in the house. We burn it because we have a dog who has accidents. And we just burn it because, you know what? Sometimes it just stinks. You make the house smell better. That's not vanity. But if I were to put the incense sticks to a little statue, big fat belly Buddha, and burn the incense to Buddha, Buddha dead. He ain't going to do nothing for me. And that big fat dummy, stupid belly button God ain't going to do nothing to me. And if I ever take that big fat belly Buddha and put it in a fireplace, it ain't going to cry, it ain't going to howl, it ain't going to jump out of the fire. And there are people that burn that incense. I had an aunt, the, the truly dedicated Catholic, she would burn that incense to Mary. Mary's dead. Mary can't help you. They have caused them to stumble in their way. From the ancient path. You know it says their ways. Because they just said verse 14. We're going to follow our imagination of our hearts. We're going to do what we want to do. And God says your ways. What's the ancient path? Where God set up through the nation of Israel. Through Moses and Aaron. This is what you do. And this is what you don't do. This is how you're to do it. And God wrote it. Down in a book. You don't just take the land, bring them here, and cut them and do whatever you You have to specifically and, and precisely do what God told you to do. To walk in paths in a way not cast up. It's not what God wanted. Not God approved. You're in trouble. To make their land desolate, empty. A perpetual hissing. That you know, they used to, when they used to watch the old movies, when the villain came on the screen, all the kids would hiss. Boo! Boo! Oh. They do that with the book of Esther, you know. When they read the book of Esther in the time of Esther, every time uh, 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 Haman is mentioned, 
in the congregation, I am told they will, hey, boo, ah, amen, ah, he's just, you know, man, why don't we do that with church? We want to be live. We want to wave our hands. We want, why can't we, oh, man, the devil, oh. David, no, don't look that direction. As we're reading the story of David. Judas, don't. I'll let somebody else do it. Jesus said, you know, offenses. Woe be to the one that is offended. Everyone that passes thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. When they see the destruction and that they see the writings of the aftermath when the book of Lamentations is written. Man! You know that Hebrew God was angry. I wag their head. I can't believe it. You know, I'm wagging, I can't believe it. What a mess. I will scatter them with an east wind before their enemies. I will show them back, the back, not the face. In the day of their clan. I won't even look at them. Then they shall say, then, yeah, then say they, come. Now this is the reaction. Come. Let come. Sounds good, doesn't it? And let us devise devices, hey, against Jeremiah. How have they taken the preaching of God through Jeremiah? Let's get them. Let's call 911 on them. Let's call the police on them. Let's have them arrested. Let's beat them up. Let's murder them. Let's torture them. Let's banish them. Let's have accusations against them. Let's ban the Bible. Let's dechurch him. Let him not in our church no more. Let's move the let's move his car of scripture. Don't listen to him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I am the pastor of this church. I've heard those. I've heard that from pastors. The churches. Don't you listen? He don't know what he's talking about. You follow me, and you do well. Fight Piper. For the law shall not perish from the priest, and the priest will be dead. And they don't even know who the priests are today. God's the only one that knows. What sacrifices are they doing today? Absolutely none. Nor console with the wise, nor the word from the prophet. They're going to do it their own way. We don't care what the Bible says. Come and let us smite him with the tongue. We're going to blabber against him. We're going to jabber against Jeremiah. Well, don't, don't listen to style. You know, that guy's a fruitcake when it comes to the Bible study. And he studies too much. And, he, and you know, he's not of the scribes like us. How dare he call himself a doctor? He, you know, he doesn't know the Greek. And he doesn't know about uh, all this. And, he, you know, he doesn't know about what the things we know. And the scholars know things that God says. What? Michael Gabriel, come here for a moment. You hear what those scholars are saying? Don't make me send you guys down there to find out what's going on. You know, there's a place that God says, thus saith the Lord, and God says, I didn't say nothing. And you know what Paul said? Have I become your enemy because I speak the truth? And he's writing to Christians to a church. He tells Timothy, a young minister, in the end, hey, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I've had my own family smite with the tongue, me and my family. 
I know it for sure. I know it absolutely 100%. I will put my hand on the King James Bible right here that I own. And I get all three or four King, five, six King James Bibles that I've read and studied through my life. I'll lay them here. I'll put my hands on there. I'll swear to a holy righteous God that my family has smoked the tongue against me. And I watched many of them go off in a way like, some of them are already in heaven. I read the other day about how the tree of life is not for Christians. We don't need the tree of life for Christians. That the fact is that those churches in the book of Revelation has a Jewish has a Jewish tribulation context. Now you can spiritually apply them to the church age, but the context of those verses are tribulation. And there's a particular family of my of me. I love him dearly. He he saved, but we fought on the leaves of the tree of life. How his pastor taught him, we will have to have the fruit. I was like, no, we don't. And that ended our fellowship together. I was trying to teach him to do right, and he was being taught to be wrong. And his pastor and another dead teacher of the Bible. Mine with the tongue. That's okay, because I'm still doing what God has me to do. God is still blessing my life. You know, we wanted a cat. We went and got a cat. We looked at a cat, and money's tight right now, and I, oh, you know. Okay, we're praying to God help us with the money and all that. And when we went and got the cat today. We, we got the adoption papers and all that. And I, I took out my ATM card. And he goes, no, sir. Said, yeah, he said, $50. He goes, no, no, you got a 100% discount. Where did that come from? You know what? She could not tell me where that She said, no, you just don't have to pay. We got in the car. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, Lord. And God's like, what, what happened now? I got a pocket full of tracks and I didn't give her one. And that bothered me. Well, because we, we had to go to the pet smart and get the cat. Uh, God says, well, why? You know, they said they loved that cat. Yeah, they did. They loved her. Why don't you go back and have them say goodbye to kitties and give her the That's exactly what we did. We, already gave, we gave the cat Shira a gospel track. Now we got Cleo. I won't tell you what I named her. Come let's smite with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his word. If you're going to live right, you're going to do right. See that 1818? You know, 18 is 6 plus 6 plus 6. You're going to have Christians, you're going to have churches, you're going to have pastors, you're going to have Sunday school teachers, you're going to have your family say, they're going to talk, and they're going to rumorize. You want, you want the name and, and the addresses of the pastors? At one church, we were asked not to come back because I didn't like the VBS decorations. That's it. I got the text somewhere. I kept the text. On the basis of the VBS decorations, don't come back to this church. And then a week later, there was a whole list of things. And some of them were made up. And some from the, from, the, from the man, oh, they lie about me. And, oh, they lie about me. They hate me. And, uh, you lied about me, brother. You're telling that I'm spending rumors and, and hate literature about you. I ain't doing nothing about that in your church. You're the liar. And you're full of pride. If they did it to Jeremiah and they did it to Jesus... And they did it to Paul. They'll do it to you if you want to do right. Not because you're an idiot. Not because you're a moron. Not because you you want to live right and you want to do right. Give heed to me, O Lord. Now, Jeremiah, and hearken to the voice of them that contend with me. Jeremiah, you get angry. Shall evil be recompensed for good? For they have dig a pit for my soul. 
a grave. That's what he's saying. They want me dead. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them, like Moses. Moses interceded for the children of Israel quite often. And to turn away thy wrath for them. So evidently, Jeremiah, unrecorded words, was like Moses, and like there's one meter between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. There are times that God gets so angry with his Christians, Jesus said, like, Father, your son, they're ours. I know, Father, he put it under the blood. Oh, okay. Or if he didn't put it under the blood, Father, you're long suffering, and I know. You know, the early church, they forget. You know, you know how far we come a long way from the Bible? There was a husband and wife in the early church. They walked, and everybody was selling their goods. And they were laying it at the apostles' feet. And there was a husband and wife came in there, and they held back a little bit. They didn't give their tithes to fulfill the book of Malachi. And both of them, Peter accused of lying to the Holy Spirit, dropped dead at, at, at the feet of the church, not the building, the church, the people. And the fact is, the church is today, because the people are not dropping dead in the building. I mean, if our pastor was really wrong, he would drop dead at that pulpit, the building. The altar call would be, we need a new pastor. So everything's got to be right. So you're, what you're doing is you're looking for signs and wonders that go to the Jews. How do I know? Oh, there's earthquakes. There was a there was there, there, there was something the, the Navy did. They, they let off this charges of, of the aircraft carrier and they said it was it was a 3.1 earthquake in Florida. Jesus Christ is coming soon. No, they did they did test by the Navy. And it was likened to an earthquake. It's Jesus is coming, but that's not the signs and wonders we're looking for. We're not looking for the signs in one in the book of Matthew. The Jews are in the tribulation period. Christians are looking for the blessed hope and no signs. They're gone. They're done. They're finished. And even you did have the signs of the Jew. You would have a church full of dead people. And the church was still continuing their sin. Because Jeremiah has a bunch of dead people, and they're continuing their sins. How do you know? What happens in the book of Nehemiah? They're doing work on the Sabbath. That's what's going on now. They have married strange wives. That's what's going on now. Men don't learn. Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine. Oh, Jeremiah. Pour out their blood by the force of the sword. War. Let their wives be bereaved of their children. That's Jeremiah the prophet. And be widowed. Let the men be put to death. Let the young man be slain by the sword of the battle. And what did Jesus come and do? Pray for your enemies. Well, what about if other Christians, what if they give me backlash with the tongue? What if other Christian churches, they de-church me? What if they fight against me? Am I to hate them? John said, who that loves his brother or his brethren is of the devil. You mean even they fight against me? Love the brethren, for God is love. I have a man that hates me at the farmer's market. He's cussed me out, called me everything but white and happy. And I pray for that man's soul. I pray he gets right. I pray for his wife. I think she has some kind of issues. I don't even know his wife's name, but I pray for the man's wife. You say, well, you know, you pray for fire to come down. I pray fire comes down on his equipment. He's a DJ. I say, Lord God, turn off that equipment, blow up that equipment. But that man's soul, listen, the DJs we've had against us, I pray for their souls. They're in my prayer list for their souls. 
I say, Lord, you know what? I don't like them here because they're interrupting the preaching of the gospel. Lord God, give them another assignment on Saturday so they can't be here on Saturday. And I pray for their soul. And you know, a lot of them, a lot of them DJs have been given other jobs elsewhere. We met one of them. He was at another. He was at another flea market. He goes, man, I'm happy here. And we've given them gospel tracks and and. Well, do you pray for their destruction? Only their equipment, not their souls. I want to see them get saved. I want to see those DJs when we're in New Jerusalem say, "Hey, you know, I'm no, you don't have to say sorry for nothing. Let's go up and praise the Lord together and holy worship without." in you. Amen. And while we're walking up to Jesus to praise Him, let me hear that gospel you used to preach. Amen. Hey. You know? Jeremiah doesn't have a New Testament attitude. David wrote the same thing, you know. So it came strange for Jesus to say, love your enemy. Let a cry be heard from their houses, like the night of Pharaoh, like the time in Egypt, where every single house had a cry, because every single house had a dead. When thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them, warriors, army, for they have digged a pit to take me, I'm going to pro now, and hit snares from my feet. They're going against me, God. Go get them. Jeremiah getting a little bitter here, but you know what? I've gotten angry and fed up with Christians. I've got angry and fed up with churches. I've got angry and fed up with pastors. The only way that stops me is their names are still in my prayer list. I had a pastor called DCF and called everything against me. And DCF came and stood before us, the, the entire crew that was involved. Said, well, let, me, let me quote the scriptures. Said, we don't find any fault with it. We found one little fault. And they're, they're going to correct it. They can correct it. That pastor uh, went and told everyone I was involved in gross, disgusting, I don't even know what it was, but gross, disgusting sin. And you know what's amazing? The pastor that told me that that pastor was saying stuff about me that were lies does not allow me in his church, but he allows the other pastor who was a liar into his church for his revival. He, that pastor knew about the other pastor was a downright liar, and he still, still allows that evangelist now in his church. He still has. Karaoke. Yet the Lord, thou knowest all the counsel against me to slay, to slay me. They want Jeremiah dead. Forgive not their iniquity. Look, Jeremiah. Neither blot out their sin from their sight. What if they repent? You know what Jeremiah sees as? They're not going to repent. You see the negative attitude Jeremiah has to his own people? God, I'm going to preach your word, but they're not going to. And I've had preachers go, well, you know, I have to, you know, America's going to have a revival and all that. No, it's not. Well, how can you say that? Because the church family is not going to have a revival. You see, in order to get a revival, you got to have an individual. That individual's got to get in his heart right with God. And then he's got to go to his wife. And he is him and his wife as a married couple of Christ has to get right in their heart while she gets right with her heart. And then they too got to go to their children and as a family get their heart right with God as the husband gets his heart right, as the wife gets her heart right, and as the children get their heart right, and they go to the Christians, their brethren, in a church, and they start passing it off. 
And that church, the people, not the building, has to get their hearts right to God. Put away their sin. Put away asterisks. Put away heroes. Put away those gods. Repenting? You can stop right there because my jury the Christian won't get right. My jury the marriages won't get right. My jury the children won't get right because the churches don't teach right. Where are they going to learn right if the pastor and their church don't teach right? And any church is involved in eros and and uh, Astras and Tamus and uh, Esther. You're not right. Absolutely not right. So you're not going to be right. And you're not going to be Listen, God's going to have a revival with you, with Satan in the front row, amen, in the preacher. That's not going to happen. Never mind America. Very few churches will get right by a revival today. Buy out their sin from thy sight, but let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them in the time of their anger. Jeremiah has a negative attitude. Because they've told Jeremiah, we're not listening to you. Shut up. You say, what about you, Star? Lord willing, I go week and week after Saturday. I am hoping for that one person to turn to Christ. I am hoping for that one person to get saved. I am hoping that one person down there, besides the new faces, but the old faces, I'm, I'm waiting for that one old face that's heard it and heard it and heard it and say, come, you know what? Tragedy's come in my family or something's come in my life right now. I want your God. You say, is that possible? Yes. There's all possibilities until that person is dead. After they're dead, that's it. They're done. Until then, I'm going to keep praying for their souls. You've never... No, I've never done the Jeremiah. I've had a few people I hated, but I pray for them and God changed my heart toward them. I've been bitter against one man. I, I, I sent him an email and I sent him a letter and he blah, 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 blah. All right, I did what I was supposed to do, Lord. He can do what I pray for his wife and, and for him. You know the number one key to get out of the Jeremiah thing? Put that person on your prayer list and pray for them. And you, you won't, that won't be a Jeremiah. Bitter? Pray for them. That'll get you out. 